G'day and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to see if I can do a few things to improve this Chilo welder. First thing I'm going to attack is this ridiculously short earth return lead. It's, um, yeah, it's practically useless. Also, just having a look at the earth clamp, um, it's not a very good quality clamp and uh, the copper braid here is way too short and it's always coming loose. And I tell you what, if I got a dollar for every time I've had to fix this, I could have bought myself a decent welder. So what I ended up doing, I ended up buying this Michigan earth clamp lead combo. I bought this from Total Tools for around, I think it was around $46. I worked out that it was uh, far easier and quite cost effective doing this as opposed to going and buying some uh, a few meters of flex cable and stuff like that. Plus, um, I really was quite keen to uh, get a better quality earth clamp. So for forty six dollars, I thought, well, uh, this this is not bad. It's a quite a good option. So what you get for that is you get four meters of sixteen mil square flexible lead at one end, uh, ten to twenty five Dinsey connector plug, and at the other end, an earth clamp. I think, what's the sound of the box? 160 amps? Yep, 160 amps. And immediately, just looking at this earth clamp, it immediately just, um, it looks and feels a lot better. Um, I think the contacts here are much, much better. Rather than having a copper braid, uh, it's got a copper, uh, a solid copper strap and um, it's well out of the way um, and the spring tension on it is far more than the cheaper nasty clamp and this thing here that's just it's like it's like day and night no comparison cheaper nasty so for 46 bucks i reckon this is not bad I'll probably end up taking the plug off and just whacking a lug on it. Because if you have a look at the welder here, the uh, lead for the torch is fixed. So I don't see any point in putting a socket in here. Although if you have a look uh, just below the lead down here, there is provision here for a Dinsey socket. So down here you see that there's a knockout or cutout for a Dinsey socket. But like I said earlier, we're not going to bother about that. But um, should you ever want to use a socket and plug for your earth return lead, that's where it'd go. One thing I was warned about in the comments was to check the gas line where it passes close by the DC terminals. Just down there. Uh, what one viewer did tell me about was that uh, his gas line had melted here where it passed by the DC terminals because uh, the DC terminals got so hot that it in fact melted this plastic tube. And uh, the reason why they got hot was that they were loose. It seems with these welders that's a fairly common thing. So also just looking at the semiconductors and looking at the heat sinks here, I actually had expected a little bit more. To be frank, it's not much of a heat sink really though, is it? It, it? it doesn't even have fins. Just looking at it, I've sort of, I 
was sort of thinking, well, you know what, it'd be quite easy for me to more than double the surface area of this heatsink. Um, I could go to somewhere like JCAR or anywhere like that and just buy a bit of a heatsink, bolt it to these holes here, a bit of thermal paste, and away we go. Uh, it'd be very easy to more than double, if not triple, the surface area of this heatsink. If I was to do that, I'd like to think that I could improve the duty cycle of this machine. But looking at the heatsink at the back, I don't have much room there. I could move the whole thing forward. Oh, there's a bit of spaghetti wiring and, and uh, some of this wiring, uh, it's not all flex, some of it is solid. And I was just thinking, ah, I'll have to freak around and reroute some of that. So I think I might just leave it. I think I'm just going to suffer the duty cycle that we've got. Anyway, we might as well whack the new lead on. Here you can see, here's the flat washer. Two of them. So we've just got to, so the earth lead comes through a hole here. The cable is double insulated and I guess that's why they felt it was okay to bring it through a non-bushed hole. Being an industrial electrician by trade, that is a no-no. You just wouldn't do it. Ah, what the hell? I'm not going to get a screwdriver in there. Uh, let's see if... Oh no, it does come out that way. Jeez, tell you what. Um, that's not... That's not fitting in real well for a for a clip in bush. That's not real good. That's pretty poor. All right, that's the lead out. Lovely. Better not forget to reinstall those crucial flat washers. All right, we'll just tighten up that thumb screw with our pliers. So we want this thing as tight as possible. Would have preferred wing nuts. There we go. Yep, as tight. Oh shit. Okay, the positive. Wow. All right, well, that's no good. That'll give that a bit of a... Holy shit. Man, I did that up tight. Obviously, with the vibration of the fan and all. Okay. Oh, well, that's a lesson learned there. I think <laughs> probably uh, every so often it might pay to check these terminals. Wow, okay. Oh, well, that's good. Better. That's tight now. That was loose. Alright, so that's the new earth return lead in, so that's good to go. Before I do put this thing back together, um, in order to try and improve the duty cycle a, a little bit, I thought um, maybe I could improve the airflow so we can dissipate the heat from the heat sinks a little bit better. So here's the cover. So yeah, I just need to, I reckon if I uh, just cut some slots here, um, I reckon, yeah, I should be able to um, get some of the hot air away from the heat sinks a lot better, a lot quicker. So what's going on here is, I'm cutting this away from the fan. I reckon it impedes airflow too much. Uh, really, there, there's only a series of sort of uh, grooves or slots. I think it's too restrictive. So I'm just gonna cut it all out and I'll be replacing it with a finger guard. Uh, they are far more free flowing. It looks a bit brutal, it looks a bit rough, but really uh, doing this with an angle grinder or a jigsaw is, is out of question. I've temporarily 
put the cover back on just because I want to test out the improved ventilation system and uh, look at it you can actually see the heatsink through there I reckon that is definitely improving quite a lot I had this old PC power supply lying around so I'm just going to grab the finger guard from that I think these are probably only about five bucks or so at JCAR but uh, yeah I thought I might as well use this and save five bucks you know it's a cup of coffee all right, let's give it a kick in the guts and see what happens. Wow. First thing I notice is it's a lot quieter and the fan is definitely spinning slower, which immediately tells me that a lot of the resistance or the impedance of flow has been removed. So just check this out. Wow, look at that. Bloody good. That's a huge improvement. So I'm curious to see with the improved intake, I'll be curious to see just how much of a difference that has made. So let's just try this. That's a lot of air coming out of here. That's fantastic. Now I'm not going to do anything to cut back on that airflow, that's just too good. What we'll do first, I'm just going to test it with the finger guard. Let's see if we can do this without hitting the fan. So just watch a piece of paper. Oh, there's a slight drop. Not much. Alright. Let's try this thing. That's what used to sit in front of the fan. It does have a couple of fins missing, but still, it's pretty close to what it used to be. So let's just see what happens here. Let's see if I can do this without hitting the fan. Oh wow. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> All right. I'll say that's pretty conclusive. Shoot metals out. For sure. And finger guard. It hardly makes, a, it hardly makes any difference to flow, so I'd definitely go with the finger guard. That's the way to go. All right. Good stuff. What a huge improvement. Another thing I wanted to point out also, this is the lug from the earth return lead. And uh, have, a, have a look at that. I don't know what crimp tool they used to crimp this. Quite clearly, the wrong one. Uh, look how they pinch the sides. When you crimp a lug, you're not supposed to flatten it like that. That is just rough as guts. All right, so the welder has all been put back together. No, I'm quite pleased with how it turned out. I did paint the vents here black. They were a bit on rough side and I guess that's what you get when you cut it with an angle grinder. I think there's only one thing left to do and that is to actually test it. Um, there's actually no doubt that the airflow has improved dramatically but I just want to prove or test whether that actually translates to and improve duty cycle. So what I'm just going to do here is I'm just going to try and simulate the conditions before I fix this. So I thought I'll just whack a bit of tape on here just to I guess just to simulate um, flow restrictions we had prior to me improving on it. So I reckon I reckon that's probably fairly close. Probably just one more on here. I reckon that's got to be, I don't know, that's roughly 50%, give or take. All right, that might have been just a little bit too much. Uh, let's take that one off. How's that? Okay, I might have overcooked that slightly. Oh, maybe conditions have changed. Uh, 
Okay. Alright, it wasn't that good, that's for sure. I reckon that's spot on. I'll just turn that off. So all that's left to do, I'm just gonna block off the vent here just to just to simulate the conditions prior to me doing these modifications. So here's the setup. At the end of the table, I've got a piece of steel. I'm going to weld on that at full bore till the thing cuts out on over temp. In the foreground here, I've got a stopwatch, so we'll record the time. That's it. Okay, it's now the day after yesterday. So we're going to run a test with the improved ventilation. That's it. Over 10. I've just gone over the video footage with the stopwatch and the results are Test 1, standard ventilation at 17 degrees, 4 minutes and 58 seconds. Test 2, improved ventilation at 18 degrees Celsius, 5 minutes and 13 seconds. Hmm, that gives us an improvement of 15 seconds. Not really sure what I was hoping for, probably a bit more than that, but I'll take that. So I guess you could say that it has improved the duty cycle a little bit. Uh, one other improvement there is a quicker cool down or a quicker thermal reset. So to wrap this up, I would say that these two improvements are well worth it. Putting in a longer earth return lead, um, you can do that by going out and buying a bit of flex cable, maybe reusing the existing earth clamp or you can do um, what I did, just go to a place like Total Tools or a place like that and buy a ready-made lead, which was, for me, which was sort of the uh, quicker and easier way. Now, as far as improvement to the ventilation goes, that is virtually free, unless you have to buy a finger guard, but really, you know, that's, that's nothing. And the improvement you get for such a simple modification is uh, well worth it so i'd definitely be doing that so for anyone who owns a rossi mic welder similar to mine i do hope that this may be of some help yeah i think that's probably about it so cheers and thanks for watching